Hey, good morning everybody. It's a Friday. It's a great day. It's gonna be nice and warm today. Got a big one we're doing. Using Auburn concrete, pumping. Let's go take a look at this from up top here. Big house. Did the garage yesterday, but it's got a really nice view too. There's two different lakes. There's a big, big lake over there. Probably hard to see on the video. And then there's another lake over here. So we're up on a high ridge. These guys also wanted to get all the lollicons in, so they put in the center beam first, but here we are, right here. All ready to go, Got about 2,800 square feet of floor we're doing in this house. Stay go down, wire mesh down, all the goodies. So we're gonna get going. Hey everybody, so this is a pretty good sized house floor we're doing today. It's it's late in November here in Maine. The temperatures are getting really cold and sometimes, you know, you just don't know how the concrete's going to set up. It gets dark around 4.30, late in the afternoon, 4.30 in the afternoon right now. So we want to try to get the concrete floor poured and finished, sawed, before it gets dark. We don't want to be working out here after dark. Now the homeowner did all the prep on this. He put the, the vapor barrier down. The reason there's two colors is it's basically the same stuff. Just one roll, the yellow roll opens up to 14 feet wide and the green roll <laughs> opens up to 10 feet wide. Um, the, I don't know why they're different colors, but that company just makes the different widths, different colors. And then the red stuff you see is the tape, the vapor barrier tape, so everything gets taped together. He also, the homeowner also did the wire mesh he put the slab bolsters under the wire to get everything all prepped for us. Um, he got actually got the garage prepped first. So we came a day earlier and we did the garage floor. And then while we were doing the garage, you know, he was down in here prepping the house so we could get the house done the next day. You just never know in November what weather, kind of weather you're going to get here in Maine. So, you know, we're trying to hustle, trying to get all these floors done. We still got quite a big list to do of of houses and garages like this, entryways, patios. You know, the ground starts freezing over and the nights get into the 20s. You gotta start putting blankets on stuff to cover it just to keep it from freezing. So that's kind of the struggle for us starting starting in November, you know, and then going into December. And then usually by the time we get into January and February, everything's all froze up and there's snow on the ground. Uh, but today, Today they actually called for a pretty a pretty decent day. It's a little chilly out this morning, but it's going to warm up, you know, pretty nice for us in the afternoon. So it's not going to be too bad a day. So we try to take advantage of any good days we can to get something poured. We did, like I said, we called in Harvey and Jim on this one. Uh, it's about 2,800 square feet, a little bit bigger than normal house. And, you know, we're using... A, Auburn Concrete today, which is a concrete company we use, we use, but we usually use a different company more often, and that's Haley Concrete. So, you know, when you get to using a company every single day, you understand like how it's going to set up, how much time you got to get it down, and all that. Especially this time of year when they start changing over to warm water and hot water. You know, some of these some of these companies will turn on their boilers and. The water will be 100 degrees when they batch the truck out. Some of them will be 120 degrees. Some of them will be 140 degrees. And, you know, depending on how long a ride you got to the, to the job like this, like this was about a 40-minute ride, you know, 20 degrees difference in, in water temperature is going to make the concrete set up a lot differently. So it's real important, at least for us, to know what that water temperature is because we put accelerator in the concrete too when the when the truck gets to the job we're just not going to rely on you know having having the warm water in there for set times we got to put some accelerator in there because we know that as soon as we dump that concrete down like this and get it to four to five inches thick that it cools off really really fast so you know if it's if they're using 120 degree water at the plant they put it in concrete truck the concrete truck drives to the job he mixes up by the time that concrete starts coming out of the truck or out of the pump hose like that 
and you test it for temperatures, it's only going to be, you know, maybe 65 degrees, 66, 68, somewhere around there. So you lay it down at, and it's in the 60s, and the air temperature is 35, 36. Well, it doesn't take much to drop that temperature, that concrete, really fast to where it just doesn't set up very much. So that's why, you know, even with the hot water, the warm water, we still put accelerator in the concrete just to help give it a kick, get it done by, you know, before dark, hopefully. That, that's the goal. So we get the first truck dumped out. We actually got four trucks coming for this house, about nine yards a piece, I think, right around that ballpark. And with five guys, it makes it pretty cool because, you know, one guy can control the end of the hose. Harvey right there has got the rake. He's kind of raking the concrete out behind Darren. And then Jim over there on the right, he, he's pretty much magging the edges to the chalk line. So he's keeping our, he's keeping our grades at the edges all ready for us. And then I'm, I got the grade stick. So I'm shooting grades, shooting pads, making sure we're not high, we're not low, and setting our elevations for the middle. And then, uh, you know, Luke and I will jump back and we'll grab the power screed and one guy will rake and we can actually start screeding while a couple guys are still pouring. So that makes, with five guys, that makes a job like this go pretty fast. You know, if there was only four, then, well, it's pretty, it's really difficult. It's almost impossible, really, to use the power screed without a raker. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's just, you just ain't going to get it flat. So you really need at least one good raker. Two's better like this. Um, and then one guy staying, staying on the edges, making sure the edges get all mag floated to grade. And then obviously one guy holding the hose like that to keep, keep the concrete being poured so that's why we call in a couple extra guys on these big ones and on the smaller ones you'll see you know if you've watched any of my other videos you'll see it's on the smaller ones it's usually just me Darren and Luke doing the majority of floors we do but it's nice having you know a couple extra guys on a job like this if that concrete does want to start setting up a little quicker than what we anticipate you know then we'll have to ditch the power screed and go to hand screeding because once that concrete starts setting up on you, it makes power screeding kind of difficult to get it flat. Whereas the hand screeding, like me and Luca are doing right now, you can you can put a little bit, you have a little bit more control on the down pressure on the screed. I don't know if that makes sense, but and you can keep things nice and flat even if the concrete's starting to set up. We do strike all our pads like that. You can see now Luke and Darren are using the 14 foot screed. We do like striking them by hand. And then if there is a small area where it's just a little quicker using the 14 foot screed by hand, we'll just we'll just knock that little area out. The board on the power screed is only a 12 footer, so sometimes you get into an area where you need just a little bit wider screed board. And we'll just hit that by hand like that, then we'll we'll jump back to the power screed. This guy he had to put his for some reason he had to put his center beam in and he wanted his lolly columns in the floor. Um, a lot of guys will just wait, they'll have us pour the floors and then they'll anchor the lolly columns on top of the floor. But for whatever reason, this guy just wanted them in the floor. So that was another reason we had to wait. We had to wait for all that stuff to go up before we could do the floor. Now Harvey's running the power screed. You see Harvey and he's got Darren there screeding for him. Luke's up there screeding by hand around that, around that pump. That little circular thing with a little bit of blue uh, felt around it is a pump station for pumping whatever you know up out of the basement this is a big walkout basement I mean these guys you saw the the view they had this is going to be a really nice view when these guys get done so they have you know the whole basement floor can be finished and then the upper floor is obviously going to be finished that's going to be the first floor and then if he has another floor above that I mean, this is going to be this is going to be almost a 6,000 square foot house with just these two floors. Big, big house. Scott's the pump operator, the guy right there on the right, and he's been he's been pumping concrete for a long, long time. But, you know, the good thing about having a guy like Scott around is you know he knows exactly what he's doing. He kind of understands the flow of pouring a concrete floor he knows he knows how to move the the pump and the boom in the direction that you want he knows how fast to go if something goes wrong he knows how to fix it 
Um, he always shows up early, so he's there before the concrete trucks, you know, getting everything ready. So you get to you get to really appreciate having a good pump operator on the job who can who can make sure that things go smooth for you. I mean, that's it. You want to get that concrete in as fast as you can on a day like today, especially. So the other guys are over there to the right. You can't see them. They're pumping concrete. So me and Luca jumping back on this third truck and getting it screeded down while they're already starting dumping the fourth truck a little bit. You can see Luke, it, when he's raking behind the screed, he's, he's always working. He's always back and forth, back and forth, making sure we're not high, we're not low. And making sure that the guy on the power screed doesn't have to stop and start, stop and start. He just wants to keep moving backwards, nice and slow, but consistently and evenly. That's, that's really the key to not having any humps or dips with that power screed, is just making sure he can keep moving backwards at a consistent pace. Now we're also at, I'm gonna show you the finishing part here too. We got, you know, we got the floor in and then Har uh, Jim and Harvey there, they take off, they work for themselves. So they take off and go back to whatever they, they're gonna do for the rest of the day. And then me, Luke, and Darren stay here to power trial this. You know, we got all the edges, we got a uh, steel trial around, we got power trial it's gonna come down and you know do you guys think that we only how many power trials do you think it took to finish this floor you think it took one power trial two guys power trialing three guys well, let me know what you guys think down in the comments before you actually see the finishing part and I think you might be surprised as to how many power trials it actually took to finish this thing and also what time what time we got done on you know a day like today where it's you can see, most, I mean, Luke's in a, in a t-shirt, but he can wear a t-shirt when it's 30 degrees out. Most of us are still wearing sweatshirts, so it's still pretty chilly out. Yeah, you can see how that works, raking behind a power screed like that. You want just a little bit of high behind the screed at all times, so it's so it, it's nothing is low. But if you got too much high behind there, it's going to just vibrate down under and you're going to get a little bit of a hump. So... It's uh, actually probably more work raking behind that than it is actually running that thing. That's about as fast as you want to go right there too when you're pulling that thing backwards. You want to make sure you give the guy time enough to do the raking the right way. You see how he's pulling back about an inch of high. That's about as high as you want to leave it behind that, about an inch. If you start getting down to a half inch or nothing, then you got to push a little bit up there. But if it's over that, you got to pull that back. You see that line he's leaving with the end of the screed? He's, that's what he's looking. He's looking to make sure he leaves a consistent line at all times on both sides of that. And that's what he needs to pay attention to. So we make sure everything's filled up. Even his foot tracks, as he's moving his boots back, we try to fill in those those little low spots where his feet are. And Harvey's just gonna get that bowl floated. And we'll get back to finishing this pour here. You can see Scott knows that we need a little bit more in there, so rather than wait for us to tell him, he's just gonna dump a little bit of more mud in there, so you know it just takes a little less time. That's what's nice about having a guy that knows what he's doing. So he dumps enough in there so we'd, we're not low. If we got to shovel a little bit out, that's no big deal. There's all, kinds of, there's all kinds of room on the outside of the foundation to shovel it out. And then that way the, the concrete truck up there, you can see it way, way up there in the, on the very top. You know, he can start washing out and get out of there and get back to the concrete plant to be loaded for another job. And then Scott can, Scott can start washing his boom. Remember, he's got... He's got hot concrete in there with accelerator, so he doesn't want to leave that in the boom, uh, the pump truck very long. He wants to get that stuff out of there. So when we bow float, we would like to leave it as smooth as we can, get out any bow float lines that we can reach, you know, and then on a day like today, we want that concrete to set up pretty firm before we start finishing. All right, that's it for the pour. It's about nine o'clock.
Started about 740. Took us just a little over an hour to get all that in. 2,800 square feet. Sun's up. It's gonna be a good day. There's that view again. Pretty cool view on a really nice day. That fog over there, that's another lake. If you can see that way over there, that's all fogged out. But the water temperature must be colder on that one than it is on this one. This one over here is a much bigger lake though. All right, we'll see you in a little bit when we start finishing. All right, so here we are. We're about 90 minutes after the pour. Concrete's firmed up enough so Luke and I can get out there on our skids, go around all the edges. There's a lot of edging to do, you know, going around the pipes, around the lolly columns. Uh, Darren has backed the truck up to that back corner. You can kind of see the truck way back up there. And then he dropped the power trial down with the crane. We got a little crane on the back of the trucks with a winch on it, with a cable that we can we can pick those power trials up and down out of a foundation like this. Makes it pretty handy. I think I got a shot of that at the end of the video with him taking that back out. And then Darren, you know, Darren's just going to start the trial up, 36 inch MBW power trial with a combo blades on it, and then he he's going to start up. And if he feels like it's uh, firm enough to hit, then he'll hit it. If he thinks it needs a couple more minutes, then he'll just shut it off. But it's it's a real bonus when you got some guys that can go out there and get your edges done. If you're the guy power trialing, that means you don't really have to stop. You can just you can just go go go, and it allows you to power trial a lot of floor, a lot of square footage with with just one power trial. So I'll let the secret out of the bag. Darren Darren was able to power trial this whole floor from start to finish all by himself with just one power trial, you know, and then Luke and I just helped him out with the edges. And it's really, you know, one guy with a good power trial like that, 36 incher, uh, has high RPMs. One guy can cover a lot of ground with a, if he knows what he's doing, you know, and his timing is right. So right now he's kind of hitting it what we call first hit, first float. So he's getting out all the bull float marks. Uh, he goes in a certain pattern, so it helps level the floor, helps keep it nice and level. And this is the second hit right here, so he'll hit it the first time. He'll get off. He'll shut the machine off if he if he thinks he has time, and he'll let it sit for a little bit, let it firm up a little bit more. Then he jumps back on, goes back over it, and each time he goes over it, if you let it firm up enough, it gets smoother and smoother. So he'll cross his pattern from the first time. You can see kind of see the pattern he goes in. He goes down to his right, brings it back up a little bit, finishes to his left, pulls it back down. I mean, I got, I got courses on this about how to power trial, how to finish concrete in my, in my concrete underground guys. If you guys want to learn how to finish concrete, but there's a, there's a way to finish it right, and there's a way to finish it wrong where the floors come out all humpy. But um, so now he's on the last hit. It's really, really firm now. It's early, still early afternoon, so the concrete's firmed up really, really good. I'm just helping him pull some leaves off, a few more leaves left on the trees. You can see that thing kind of kind of glassing out now, shining out with this last hit. Some of it, some of it goes earlier than others, depending on how much of it was in the sun. Some of it's been in the shade a little bit longer because of those high walls and the elevation of the sun. And then we'll just pull that off. We got the soft cut saw on there already. So we'll measure out where we want our saw lines and we'll get some saw cuts in this thing. That's how that crane works. That works really, really nice. So I got a remote, a little tiny remote, battery remote, and I'm just pulling that up with the winch. And I can leave it hooked up, pull it right out of the way, and I can clean it up, scrape all the scrape all the dry concrete off it, put it back in the truck. And then we'll measure out. We try to cut saw cut joints off each of those those corners of the foundation because it's going to want to crack off any one of those corners so we'll put a bunch of cuts in this you know back and forth one way or the other and try to control any of these shrinkage cracking or the contraction joints and for the most part it works really really good we haven't really had any trouble with our floors cracking up 
and then Darren's going to jump on there with that soft cut saw. I don't know how many lineal feet of cuts we had on this floor. We probably had 300 lineal feet maybe, you know, and it takes him with that saw 20 minutes to cut that much. So it, with, it doesn't really take that much time if you know what you're doing and you got the right saw. And then, I mean, the reason we like to saw the same day is so now we don't have to come back the next day in the morning and do our saw cuts. So... You know, it saves a bunch of time, bunch of travel. That saw pays for itself, <laughs> literally in a few floors. Honestly, it's about a two thousand dollar saw, and then the blades. You know, the blades are around a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a piece, but they last. The blades last quite a while. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, How would we do on this one? We got done on a fall day, where. Temperature started out in the 30s. They ended up in the 50s here. It was nice and sunny in the 50s. We got done about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.